Hello, this is Barbara Hello. Mueller, and I just want to welcome you to peacepodcast.org. And today we have a very, very special guest. And it's a person that you will say, my goodness, how did she have the miracles happen for her to produce a movie on the famous, and you're going to find out why, Robert Seymour, a civil rights activist and Chapel Hill pastor. So welcome, Aya. Thank you. Aya was in her car when I wrote her an email and said, I just watched your your documentary. You can't hold back the spring. I just couldn't stop watching. It's more than an hour long, but I just said, this is the, what I'm supposed to do right now. I'm supposed to watch the evolution of a saint. I call him a saint because of what he did for the world and what he has left behind him. So Aya, what is it about you that allowed you to take three years and how did you meet him? Uh, three years to make this documentary and, and then how did you meet him? Thank you, Aya, for being here today. <laughs> Thank you so much, Barbara. Yes, yeah, so um, the year 2016 was quite a challenging one for me and, and on, on a number of fronts. I um, had some sickness and illness and a frozen shoulder and I was had this terrible virus and I was really kind of depleted and um, just, you know, just, disappointed with how things were going in my life. So I, I prayed to God, you know, my understanding of what God is, or other people say higher power universe, but I prayed and I, I really sincerely from the bottom of my heart said, God, just let me go or let me do a documentary. And you know what I want to do a documentary on. I want to do a documentary on people who, you know, leaders that were very active during the civil rights movement. And I was particularly interested in my own faith, the Baha'i faith, documenting some of the leaders of, of that, of my, my particular faith. But I was led to a job helping the elderly in January of 2017. And I just sort of took the job because I was, had had a hard time. And I was like, I'll just do whatever. I don't even care. And I took a job that walked dogs and did grocery shopping for the elderly and just various other, you know, assistant responsibilities. And I got assigned to Dr. Reverend Robert Seymour to walk his dog twice a day. And I really didn't know who he was. He was 91 when I met him, when I started to walk his dog. And people in the neighborhood, uh, in the retirement community that he was in would, you know, stop me and say, oh, you know whose dog you're walking, right? And I said, not really. <laughs> um, and I said, oh, he's 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 someone of, of note in the community. I think you should find out who he is. So one day he called me into his den after I was walking his dog, Pastor. His dog's name was Pastor. And he said he had something to talk to me about with the dog. And and I felt this this energy about him. And I I don't know. It's just I was drawn to him. And I said, OK, I need to go look who this man is. And I Googled him and I was blown away. I couldn't believe the stuff that I discovered. I mean, he was the founder of I mean, he brought Habitat for Humanity to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. He, the first black mayor of Chapel Hill, was a part of his congregation. Dean Smith, who is a legendary basketball coach, was a part of his congregation all in the 60s before they were like, you know, anybody. And he he led that congregation in such a way that uh, just moved and shaked Chapel Hill and North Carolina. And so anyway, I we sat down and talked, Robert Seymour and I sat down and talked, and I asked him if I could film him just off my camera, my phone camera. And he said, sure, why not? And so we talked for about 15 minutes. And at the end of the interview on my camera, he says, hey, I wrote a book. It's called Whites Only. Would you like to read it? It chronicles my whole life in North Carolina, my whole life period, and you know all the places that he's been. Um, would you like to read it? I said, yes, of course. And so I, I read it. I went home, read it. And I couldn't believe it. And I said, I, I I built the courage up in my mind to ask him very shyly if I could possibly do a documentary on his life. And he said, I'm game if you're game. And I thought I had won the lottery. I mean, it was so powerful for me, for him to say that. I went from feeling so despondent to just feeling completely elated and not knowing how in the heck I was going to get this done. But so anyway, uh, the next day he he said to me, he says, are you sure 
are you sure you want to do this? This is quite of an ambitious project. And I said, yes, it's going to happen. Yes, with enthusiasm. That's my theory. If you say <laughs> yes with enthusiasm, the universe will support you. And this is Absolutely. a perfect example. Absolutely. And said, are you sure you want to do this? And you said, absolutely. Boy, does that make ring bells with me. Oh, my God. It's, it was, um, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> because I but, always say to people, if you're going to say yes, you have a three second window, but know that that's going to change your life. Yeah. And did it, it change, did change my life? life. It changed. Yes, it did change my life. Well, anyway, let's sorry, go ahead. that for a couple of minutes. How did it change your life? How did the miracles begin? This little conversation, this wonderful conversation that I am having with Aya Volpe is about a miracle. I, she, her, her mother, darling, Quanta, Quanta Don Light says to me on an email, you've got to watch this video of my daughter and you must have her on your peace podcast. And I said, okay, I didn't get enthusiastic like Quanta was until I got your link. And then I opened it up and I realized the title just alone, you can't hold back the spring was so powerful. And so then I sent her an email this morning, less than two hours ago. And I, I believe in miracles. And here we are doing this video. So tell me about some of the miracles that occurred for you. Well, for one, I want to make it clear that you can't hold back the spring. The title of the documentary was his original title for his book. But the publisher convinced him to change it to whites only, thinking that it would, you know, be more provocative and sell more. So but I took his original title and and made that the documentary and at the end just a quick note you know after he passed away he passed away four days after the docu documentary was complete he was able to see the whole thing and his daughter was going through his things and found the original manuscript for the book and she handed it to me and said this is yours and it was with all his markings and all his annotations and the, you can't hold back the spring was the, on the title of the book of the manuscript. Anyway, so that's just one note. As far as the miracles that I experienced, I can't even begin to tell you. It, it, it would I'd have to write a book just about that story, the story of, you know, uncovering articles. I went to the Southern Historical Collection and found articles and letters and, you know, uh, newspaper clippings and all kinds of things. That's where I started. And then I started to gather names for interviews of people that were significant in his life and significant, you know, that were prominent in the book. So I, you know, I, of course, asked him who he recommended. One of the greatest miracles, I think, was meeting Dr. Reverend James Forbes. Uh, he was from North Carolina, but he went on to become the first African-American minister for Riverside Church in New York City. Uh, and he was in New York when I started this documentary. And I and Dr. Seymour said, you really want to get a hold of him. He's he's number one. He's like one of the number one people. So I looked up his address, phone number. I emailed, left messages, everything. Didn't hear back. And he's an older. He's it was in his 80s. And uh, I didn't hear back. And I thought, well, maybe he just thinks I'm a scammer or doesn't, you know, who is this lady writing to me? Or maybe he never got the messages. So one, I let it go. One year later. Reverend Seymour gets a call from Reverend Forbes wishing him a happy birthday and leaves his cell phone number on Reverend Seymour's phone. Reverend Seymour, as we, we call him Bob, he just said he likes people to call him Bob. Anyway, he said, you got to call. I almost forgot. Reverend Forbes called me. He left me his number. Call this number. So I, I was like, ah, he's not going to call me back. You know, he's he's up in New York. and He's, he's, he's going to not call me back. So I waited three weeks. And one day it just something hit me, something inspired me to just go ahead and give the call. And I called him. He called me right back. This is kind of a long story. So I'm going to just share this one story. Um, and he says, Isla, I'm in the mountains right now. Call me on Saturday. I, I said, okay. He called me on Saturday. And I, this is a man I've been trying to get a hold of for a year. He said, Isla, I would more than be more than willing to be delighted, honored to be a part of the documentary about Reverend Stormer. He is my man. I would do anything for him. And I said, well, there's one, you know, one problem. I got to get to New York and all the logistics of that. He says, Isla, I just spent my first night 
with my wife in my new townhome in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is where I was, meet me tonight at this commemoration that we're having at a hotel. I want you to introduce yourself. First time, this would be my first time meeting him. First time speaking to him, first time meeting him. I went with my mom. My mom was in town. And we we, we went to this gathering. It was in a um, one of the ballrooms. And so we went there. No one was expecting us. It was a f- room full of all African-American, you know, um, congregation members and citizens of North Carolina, of Raleigh, all dressed up, waiting to eat dinner. And I walked to the table and I said, well, hi, my name is Isla. I'm, I'm here because Dr. Forbes invited me to come to this gathering. And she's, well, if he invited you, then come on in. And so they had a table in the front for us. We sat down. And he was at the on the stage with his wife and all the other speakers. And he came down off the stage and introduced himself. It was just a glorious evening. I mean, he introduced me to the whole crowd. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not not prepared for this. Anyway, so long story short, so I leave the meeting after it's done, and I look back at the stage, and him and his wife are waving goodbye to me. And something about about that struck me. I don't know. I don't know why at the time. I didn't know why it struck me. So I was driving home on cloud nine. It was like I was on in heaven and I was driving home and I said, wait a minute. I had a dream about this three months ago. I wrote this down. So I went back through my dream log and sure enough, I had written down that I was at an all African-American gathering. I was the only white person there. I was welcomed with open arms. There was food on the table. Everyone was dressed up. And after the gathering, this is my dream. Okay, I'm leaving the party and I look back and there's a prominent, I don't know who it is, there's a prominent African-American leader and his wife waving goodbye to me in the dream. And I thought, this, this was, this is meant to be, this was, it was, and I became very good friends with him and his wife. And we've, we've had other collaborations since then, but that's just one example of a, a true miracle throughout the process. And there's so many more. But I don't want to take up all your time. That is such a beautiful story. That is such a beautiful story illustrating what my theory is. When your passion is pure, when your ideas are harder than you can even hold on to, the invisible spirit world, the dream world, all of the invisible visionary parts of us that we don't pay attention to become known. And when you know, when you know, that this is going to happen, then you don't have to worry about how it's going to happen. You just know that it's going to happen. I could tell you the miracles of my life, but I want to hear the miracles of this fabulous documentary. Now, I saw the documentary on Vimeo, and I couldn't stop watching it. Is it available for people to watch? How is, How can a person who really wants to see this documentary, and we're not even getting into his life, We're not even getting into the significant parts of how he was. He called himself a racist until he was 20. He said it right out. When I was 20, my whole life changed. And he died at 95. That means he had 75 years of living his truth. The truth that we're all created equal, that we all have a purpose, that we are all able to live our destiny with love. And he amplified that all through the movie. Yes. Definitely. So you captured his old little voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He wasn't <laughs> he wasn't the power of a house that he was at the pulpit, but he told his story. And the the yes. documentary contains videos of other people telling their love for him and how they he changed lives. Yes, it was amazing how many people were. I was when I would actually think of who I want to interview, something would happen, something would appear. When I wanted to interview. Um, Orlean Graves uh, sim, um, from the, from uh, Mars Hill, uh, North Carolina. Uh, it was so interesting. The president of the Mars Hill College just happened to visit Dr. Seymour that week that I was thinking about uh-huh. wanting to interview her. And I hadn't even thought about it before. Uh-huh. I didn't think that that was possible. So I said, oh my gosh, do you think I could sneak in just five minutes with him to get some information about where um, this Dr. Orlean Grave Simmons, uh, you know, is and how I could get a hold of her. And he said, okay, you got five minutes. <laughs> so 
So I went in and he gave me her, her personal address and email. And I emailed her. She emailed me right away. And we scheduled an interview to go to Mars Hill, um, Mars Hill, North Carolina to interview her. So that was just another, I mean, I can't, I, I'd have to write a book to write all the miracles that happened. Truly. Oh, almost like in the old programming way, you take one little circle and you put your name and then you begin to make the lines to the miracles. And there's a miracle. And this is, this miracle led to this miracle and this, and if we do that, flow chart our miracles, think about what other people could learn from relaxing, relaxing yeah. to knowing that the universe will support us. And it's yes. so beautiful. Your story is so beautiful. And you're so beautiful. Thank you. Your Aww, thank you. and your heart are so pure. And, and you came from a point of not knowing and you asked God, show me the way or the higher power, show me the way or give me a clue. And so what yeah. do you do? You start walking dogs, period. I mean, simple, do, do something because do the something. universe will find you. Is, is that kind of the philosophy you use throughout this documentary? Yes, it, it, it was just, oh gosh, yes, uh, totally. I, once I got on the, you know, the journey, it just, it was like I was flying. I, I, I didn't have any doubt whatsoever that it was going to be completed. He doubted a few times. He, you know, he was like, are you sure this is going to happen before I die? I was like, yes, it is going to. Did you always use your iPhone? Most of the video is on from your no, iPhone. No, I had wonderful volunteers. I had people that I paid, you know, um, some amounts that, that I had to, but some, I had wonderful volunteers and I have to give credit to my editor, Megan Hollenbeck. She was fabulous. And she was just the most patient generous talented gifted editor and she worked with me you know we all we had our back and forth and maybe this shouldn't be in there maybe that shouldn't be in there and you know didn't always agree but we finally came to a place of real collaboration and agreement and we're best friends now and I just want to give her so much credit for all the work that she put into this film and you know being able to work with me because I, I interviewed a few editors and I just nothing seemed to click and then she came along and it was just another miracle you know so i i want to mention that as well so it's beautiful and again i asked the question earlier how can we view this marvelous document? oh you did ask that question sorry about that no problem. um so we were we were trying to because of the pandemic when it was completed and just all sorts of things that were happening the 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 climate the political climate i was kind of hesitant at first to put it out there publicly we also wanted to edit it, but now I'm thinking maybe we shouldn't edit it. <laughs> um, but we wanted to clean it up a little bit and then make it public. Uh, to, you know, I don't for know anybody if we to need to do that. I watched the whole movie on my iPhone, and oh, every wow. part of it was wonderful. I didn't even okay. put it in the big screen because I was trying to weave it into my busy life because I knew I had a, a 6:30 conversation about the peace park that's going to be taking place, and so I just put it on my iPhone and went about my life and sat down and watched it and ate okay. breakfast with you. And it was great. So I don't know if okay. they edited it or not. I don't know, but if they want to watch it, what's the, what's the magic? All right. If they do, I'm going to put it, I will provide you a link to okay. either YouTube or something and we can put it on your page. I yes. haven't done that yet. So I need to transfer the files. We were going to do some polishing and hopefully had it, have it available by April 1st. Well, here's what I'm um, going to say then. Stay okay. tuned. If you are yeah. interested in actually seeing the video, now I went on, of course, with your um, passcode and all of that. But mm -hmm. in April, we will have the video available in April. Today's podcast is about believing in yourself, believing mm -hmm. in the dream and asking for help when you don't have a vision. She was asking for help. Yes. Either I'm out of here. Or give me some clue about what I can do next. Give me the clues. And maybe yeah. it's walking, like you said, what happened in that little interim between asking and getting, receiving, I should say. You mean asking to do, if I could do the documentary? No. Well, he made that. It. Yeah. Oh. I asking. Was thinking more about asking God, the higher power. Mm -hmm. What was the interval between that and walking the dogs? Well, I had, I had been sick with some terrible virus. I was, yeah, things just weren't working out that year. And I prayed, I really, I was just very, very vulnerable and down on my knees and I prayed and I, and, and then within a couple of weeks, 
I, my friend recommended this job that she had discovered through the listserv, our next door listserv. And so I applied and that took a couple of weeks. That was the long process of, uh, she was very detailed. My boss was very detailed and thorough with interviewing people and researching everybody, which was great. And um, so I'd say about a month from the time that I asked is when I started walking his dog. And like I said, from then it took even two more months to talk to him. I was walking his dog, didn't know who he was for two months. I mean, not really, you know, I just, it was somebody I'd just say, hi, goodbye, you know, thank you. He'd say, thank you from the den. And I'd say, okay, see you later. And it wasn't until he called me in to talk about something regarding his dog that we had started having a conversation and that's, it went from there, so. Beautiful. <laughs> you are listening to Isla Volpe. As you listen to her, you are going to understand that the universe does support our passion when we find it. And sometimes it takes a path kind of crooked and maybe not exactly straight, but you get there. So I love created the documentary. You can't hold back from can't hold back the spring. And that was the title of the the author, Robert Seymour's book. And then the publisher changed it to what did they change it to? Wise? Whites only. Why is like, -E white a w h i t e s oh, only white only, no. only as in the fountain you know the fountain water fountains were separated and segregated yeah. everything was like yeah. yeah the first time i realized that that was really real because i'm in santa barbara california and we don't really think like that here everybody's right. cool and welcome and love you and all of that mm -hmm. i was um, in college and my boyfriend at that time had just been hired at cape canaveral and he was putting the man on the moon because John Kennedy said, we're going to have a man on the moon. And I went to visit him in Cape Canaveral. And I went to the bathroom at the, at the um, gas station and it said black and whites only. And I mm -hmm. said, whites only? You mm -hmm. know, like shock. And then the drinking fountain didn't even have one for blacks. They only had a white drinking fountain. And so I said to my husband, wow this is my husband my husband to be i said i've never seen this and he said well just pay attention it's all over florida and that was not that long ago we're talking 1964 yeah yeah 1802 or 1913 and so right. this video your documentary about robert seymour was just so profound. And it exemplified what I say on Peace Podcast. You are now 121. You're my 121st interview. <laughs> and summarizing with your life story, what I try to give people, pay attention, trust that you are on the right path. Her dream even came true. And we all have these moments. Pay attention to your life, relax into it. And trust that you're on the right path and when you're not say that prayer of empowerment and so i always give the person at the end of our podcast for health happiness and well-being and peace of course what would you say to the world right now from your experience of this three and a half years and meeting this fabulous man robert seymour i would say believe in your dreams have faith that they will come true and ride the 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 journey of guidance with certitude. It leads you to a place of certitude where you know that the universe is behind you. You have no doubt at all that you're being guided and being supported. Trust and in that. Trust. Trust and be it sure that you are guided. Now, it also takes hard work. You know, yes. Once she had these doors open, and I always say, I've been on so many radio shows, and the people who are listening call in and say, well, how do you know which door to go through if two doors open at the same time? And I say, well, go bo go through both. And then you have an excuse to close one, and you can just close the door just like you do at home. But the most important part is how did you feel as you walked through those doors? And you said yes with enthusiasm to make this documentary. Yes. And also patience. Patience is key. Persistence is key, as Dr. Seymour would tell me. Um, and also, if something isn't working right away, let it go for a while. Put it aside and focus on something else. And then it will come around. If it's meant to come around, it will come around. 
Exactly. It, That's so perfect. Because like today, I'm sending her this podcast invitation. And then we start talking and she's in her car. And the next thing you know, we both felt it was right. And she said, I'm near a park. This is how the world works. It's so beautiful if we could just relax enough to know that. And so with that, I thank you for watching today. I'm Barbara Gonmuller. This is peacepodcast.org. And I'm going to put this peace podcast in our newsletter this week. I want the world to see what you can do when you see the door that you're going through is exactly what, where you need to be. And then you trust the universe that will bring you into the fulfillment of your dream. And in this case, a real dream became reality for her. Thank you so much, Isla. Thank you so much, Barbara. I really appreciate your time and, and interest in this. Thank you. Oh, man, do I also appreciate <laughs> you. And I'm going to now stop the video. And I thank you, viewers. You're the best. We wouldn't be here without you. Thank you.